Begin standing facing the wall. You can position your hands on the wall for support. Let's stretch the neck, drawing circles one way. Option to move through half circles if you prefer. Opposite direction if you're drawing full circles. Pressing the hands firmly against the wall, round out the upper back, making space between the shoulder blades. Inhale, press the chest and belly forward to a small back bend. Exhale, move back as we continue to shift through standing cat-cow. Coming back to a neutral position, plant the left palm on the wall as you reach the right hand and gaze back, twisting to the right. Try to keep your hips square to the wall as much as you can here. Opposite side. Release the twist, walk the feet back a touch, and half fold to a jackknife position. Keep the legs straight and open the shoulders as you gaze down. To standing, move in close to the wall, raise your right knee to chest, and then lean into the wall using it to help keep that leg up high. Place your hands wherever they want to be for support. Push away and release. Repeat with the left leg this time. And release. Hands up high on the wall to a standing puppy pose. Press your chest forward to the wall, arching the back. Stretch, rounding the shoulders, and 
release. Turn your back to the wall, fold, and walk out to a downward facing dog, heels against the wall. Raise the right leg up high along the wall to a three-legged dog. Use the wall to increase and maintain the stretch. Release, left side. and release. Now get strong through your hands, spreading the fingers wide. You might want to bring them in a little closer to the wall. We're stepping the feet up on the wall at hip height, one at a time to an L pose. Stay strong through the back and shoulders as you gaze to the wall. Aim as much as possible to stack your hips over your shoulders, over your wrists in this position. Carefully step down, lower your knees and press back to a child's pose. Coming through table to plank, you can plank on the mat or step your feet firmly to the wall. Release to down dog. Step the right leg forward and then shimmy the left leg back, shin against the wall, toes pointing up. Hands down, lean the body forward. Sink the hips in a low lunge, small pulses as needed or holding if you prefer. Twist right, reaching for the left foot with the right hand. Open up through the right side chest. Hands down, shimmy the right foot over to the left side to a pigeon stretch. Get long through the body before folding over that front leg.
option here to lift the body and twist left, reaching for the back foot. You can go a little further here to a mermaid pose. Left foot to left elbow crook. Reach the right arm up and back to grasp the left. Lift the chest and gaze forward. Release and carefully return the left leg to the wall. Shimmy the right leg back to the lunge position. Bring your hands to your knee and lift the body up, pressing it back nearer the wall, deepening the stretch through your left quad. Hands down and release the legs to a table position. We're moving to the opposite side, left leg forward, right shin up against the wall, toes pointing up. Hands down, sink into the hips. Twist to the left, reaching for the back foot, opening up the left side chest. Hands down, shimmy the front foot over to a pigeon stretch. Get long through the body before folding over that front leg. Option here to lift the body and twist right, reaching for the back foot. You can go a little further to a mermaid pose. Release and carefully return the leg to the wall. Shimmy that front leg back to the lunge position. Bring your hands to your knee and lift the body up, pressing it back nearer the wall, deepening the stretch through your right quad. Release carefully and turn to face the wall. We're making our way to a garland pose. Low squat, knees apart, hands together at your heart as you press into your legs with your arms.
To crow now, close to the wall, hands down ahead of you, shoulder width apart, fingers spread wide. Bring the feet in close together and raise the hips up high. Rest the upper shins against the back of the arms as close to your underarms as you can. Lean forward, keeping your chest and gaze lifted. Raise one leg, then the other. Once both feet are lifted, work to bring those big toes together and raise the feet towards your seat. After this, we'll be moving to a tripod headstand. You can lower your head with control from crow, or lower your feet first and then place your head down ahead of your hands. Arms remain bent, as in crow, elbows in line with your shoulders, hands maintaining that shoulder distance apart. Head down, strong hands, making sure you're not collapsing in the neck, legs balancing on your arms, float the legs halfway, engaging the core before straightening all the way up, pointing the toes. Press through the fingers and heels of the palms for balance as needed. Lower both legs together, returning them to the arms and release the feet to mat. Come forward to kneeling, hands on your lower back as we bend to camel pose. Option to keep your hands on your back instead of taking them to your heels for a smaller back bend. Releasing camel, we're going into a headstand with our forearms down. Position your elbows shoulder width apart. You can gauge this by folding the arms together to see if your hands can clasp the opposite arms. Keeping your elbows in position here, clasp your hands together ahead of you forming a triangle with your elbows and hands. Gently place your head down within that triangle. Get strong through the arms and shoulders to relieve pressure from the neck. Raise the hips up high. Then raise one leg, then the other, against the wall for support. You can float the feet off the wall and balance if you like. Focus on staying strong through the upper body and core. Lower one leg, then the other, and then make your way to seated in a hero pose. Long through the back and neck, knees together. to a forearm stand this time. Forearms down, shoulder width apart and parallel to each other, palms flat. Raise the hips, then lift one leg up, then the other with a little kick to meet the wall. You can keep the body straight or play with a hollow back position if you feel safe doing so. Release one leg, then the other with control, coming to a dolphin pose. Press to down dog, walk the hands back to ragdoll in forward fold. Tighten up the legs and core as you slowly roll to standing. We're going to kick up to the wall in a handstand this time, with as much control as possible. We don't want to overshoot with our feet slamming into the wall, so it may take a couple of tries to get there smoothly. 
Try your best and be persistent. One leg up, the other follows. Once you are upside down against the wall, tuck the navel in, get wide through the upper back, strong through the arms and shoulders, and straighten the body. Hands should be shoulder width apart, fingers spread wide. Press through the fingertips and heels of the palms, back and forth to maintain balance. You can play with floating the feet off the wall here if you like, or with making shapes with the legs. Kick off the wall and return as needed if you're not used to being upside down. Coming out of the handstand, make your way onto your back with your legs up the wall. Shimmy your seat as close to the wall as you can get it. Cross your right ankle over the left leg above the knee, then pull your left leg in towards your chest to a figure four stretch or reclined pigeon. You can press your left foot into the wall to deepen the stretch here. Release, take your time repeating that on the opposite side. using the wall for support. Press your hips up, hands to your lower back to a supported shoulder stand, raising the legs up high off the wall. You can stay here or lower that right leg to a half plow position, keeping that left leg as straight up high as you can. Lift the right leg up and drop the left. Raise the left leg up, then both legs together now to a plow pose. You can keep your hands on your lower back or release them down to the mat. Releasing plow pose, lowering the hips, take your legs to a wide angle along the wall. 
option to place your hands on your legs to deepen the stretch, or just allow gravity to work it for you. Raising the legs together, we're ending with the legs up the wall pose. Allow your legs to just hang out here in this position, feet not flexed nor pointed. Your hands can rest on your belly, at your sides, or you can take them overhead as you take a few deep breaths to finish up. 